Hey guys, it's Landon with Refund Horizons, and uh, this is a video I'm doing for one of my survey techs, Elena. So I'm going to show her how to set up an alignment in Carlson. Carlson survey. Uh, we're going to we're going to try and do some more Carlson survey videos. Uh, most of my videos have been in uh, BricsCAD, but uh, we're going to try and do some some Carlson videos. So I've got some USDA Nate photography in here. And uh, this is the deep water channel uh, that they dredged coming into Stockton so we can get big ships over here at our port. And uh, this is what they call the turning basin at the port. This is where the ships turn around. So I want to create an alignment uh, in Carlson. If you're GIS, you'll, you'll know that as a, a linear referencing so or, or a route. So we want to create an alignment. That's what surveyors and engineers call it. And um, I want to add stationing to this. So uh, what I did, I didn't want you guys to watch this, but I, I went in here and I have a series of line segments drawn. Okay. And um, you'll notice that my lines, I try and center them in the channel uh, as best as I can. Um, but when you get to a curve, uh, you're going to see this, this isn't in the middle of the channel. But we're going to fix that in a minute. Okay. So when you start out, don't worry about the curves. Just try and just draw a polyline with straight lines that are, that are roughly centered on the, um, the segments that you need for your route. Okay. And then uh, once that's done, then you can go in and, and fit your tangent curves. Okay, we're assuming these curves are tangent. Um, and the, and the, in this example, I'm just creating a, uh, an alignment just based on some uh, GIS grade orthophotography, right? So sometimes you'll have a surveyed alignment or a design alignment, but in this case we, we don't have an existing alignment, so we're trying to recreate one. Okay, so we want a tangent curve laid in here, and so in CAD, the easiest way to get a, a tangent curve is the, with the fillet command. And then what you have to do is you just kind of have to experiment with some different radiuses, okay? So I'm gonna just make a guess here. I'm gonna go with a 500 foot radius. Okay, I'm gonna fillet these two lines. And you can see here that that, was, that radius was way too small for the scale I'm at. This curve is just way too tight, right? So we're going to undo that. Okay, and so now that, I, now that I know that's too small, we'll do this again. And uh, this time I'm going to go with a 2,500 foot radius. Okay, now that curve uh, looks like a pretty good fit to me. So I think I like 2,500. Okay, now you'll know if you go too big because your curve will be too shallow, right? So let's just try that. I like 2,500, but let's just say we did 5,000. Okay, you're going to see that makes a curve. Ah, you know what? <laughs> that actually looks better. Um, I like 5,000 better. So let's try, uh, sorry, my dogs are barking there. Let's try 10,000. Okay, so uh, what it told me there was that uh, my curve won't fit my lines. So let me let me try that again. Uh, radius, I might have got one too many zeros on there. Okay, so you can see uh, that's too big of a of a radius because now my curve is tucking in too far, too close to this other shore, right? So it turns out for this particular intersection here the, the best curve looks like that 5,000 foot radius curve and that's just kind of something you're gonna you're gonna eyeball okay so that looks good so we'll just move that up we'll do this again now I just can tell that um, this looks like it, it might be a little bit of a steeper angle here so uh, we'll try 5,000 first uh, but we may have to we may have to make that smaller you know, 5,000 looks pretty good. I like 5,000 there. I think we're going to go with that. Okay, so then we're going to come down here to our next curve. Okay, uh, it looks like it's about the same angle, so uh, we'll try that. We'll try 5,000 again. Okay, uh, let's see. I think that looks pretty good there. So maybe they, they designed this with 5,000 foot curves or something similar. So let's try it here. That looks pretty good to me. Try it here. Okay, so this is probably not a coincidence. It's probably that somewhere around a 5,000 foot radius is the, the turning radius they want for these picked ships. 
Okay, now this one looks like it might be a little steeper. So 5,000 here might be too big. It is, it's too big. Okay, so you see how close we, we hug this shore? That means our radius was too big. All right, so let's try, uh, let's go back to, whoop. Let's go back to 2,500 on this one. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good, 2,500. And yeah, I'm trying to think, is that is that hugging too close? I think that looks pretty good, 2,500. Yeah, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with that. Okay, and then here, this looks like another 5,000 foot to me. It's fairly shallow. Yep, that looks good. Five thousand. Okay, and I think that might be. Nope, we got. We got. Uh, we're almost done here. So okay. So again, on this one, five thousand is too big. See, I'm hugging this shore too much. So let's try that. Uh, we'll go back to twenty-five hundred. think on this one though I think I messed this up so on this last one I, I really I don't have my line quite centered like I want it looks like I hug this other shore a little too close so I'm gonna pull that down that looks better now that probably won't have a big impact on the radius that we use so let's try 2500 Try that again. Radius. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're done now. We fit our curves in here. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create an alignment. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, just to make things a little easier, is I'm going to go in and I'm going to freeze that layer with our images. We don't need to see that now. So now we want to go ahead and set up our actual route with our station. Okay, so what we need is we need a polyline. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to do polyline edit, and we're going to go multiple, and we're going to select these straight lines and arcs, and we're going to turn them into polylines, and we're going to join them. And I'm going to just do a uh, a one foot fuzz there. Except I messed that up. Let me try it again. Polyline edit, multiple. And we're going to join, and okay, so it, it went ahead and joined them. Okay, so now we've got a 2D polyon. So we can use that in Carlson to create an alignment. Now, if you're used to working in AutoCAD Civil 3D, alignments are, are a little different. So in Carlson, uh, your alignments, they, 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 all your alignment commands work with polylines kind of out of the box. So an alignment isn't like a special object like it is in Civil 3D. So all you need is a, is a 2D polyline to have an alignment. Okay, and there's parts of that that work better and parts that don't work as good. But usually the main thing you're trying to do when you want a, an alignment in CAD is you want to generate stationing labels. That's the main thing we want to do. So what we want to do is show you how you can do that. So we're going to come up here to center line. That's where Carlson keeps the, uh, keeps the alignment commands. So Carlson calls it a center line. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to come down here and we want to uh, label. We want to st we want to create our station label. So that command is station polyline center line. So we're going to click that. Okay, and it brings up this box. Now you got to be careful. There's a lot of knobs and switches here, right? Okay, but we want. So we're just going to walk through some of this. We want 100 foot whole stations, 50 foot <coughs> half stations. Okay. And there's some separate settings on the curve, which I'm, I'm going to leave the same. Now, the beginning station, this is important. That's the value you want at the start of your station. And usually, you don't want zero stations. You don't want a zero to be your starting station because you don't want negative stations. So I'm going to say, um, in this example, I want uh, a station, my stationing to start at uh, 10,000 feet. OK, so 100 plus a pair. Okay, and we want uh, even stations and odd stations. And I'm going to check. I want it to label my start and end stations okay um, let's see I'm, I don't want to specify my start end 
I don't need to label my deflection angles or my point of intersections. I'm not worried about that. Okay, uh, we do want to erase previous station labels if we have them. Okay, and I want to label the station. Okay, now we want to set up our labels and our markers. So we're going to come in here to labeling. Okay, it's got these standard layers here that don't match my company standards. So I'm going to change this. So we're going to call this uh, survey text stationing. Okay, and the standard text style is fine. We're going to go 0.1 on the text height and the offset scalar. Okay, uh, the horizontal offset, I think, I'm not sure. I'm going to try this at 10. We'll see what happens. Okay, I do want to use M text. Um, I don't need to label the intermediate, the half stations. I'm just going to label the, the whole stations. Okay, uh, the station units. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the drawing units, which is feet. Okay, station prefix. I'm going to put STA. You can put in your own prefix. Okay, the number of decimals here. I am going to just go to the nearest whole foot. Okay, I am not going to remove zeros. Okay, um, I am, I'm not going to label the center line name. Um, I am I am not going to label the the northing and easting of the starting and end point. Don't need to do that. Okay, I do want a tick at the station mark. Okay, and I like my station labels to be perpendicular. Okay, so I'm going to hit OK there. Now we're going to set up our markers. Okay, and we're going to put that on our layer standard. So survey symbol stationing. Okay, and then uh, we're going to make this a tenth instead of 0 0.08. Signs markers, and I don't need my PI line mark mark. I don't need to draw my PI my uh, point of intersection lines. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm not worried about labeling my uh, my PCs or my PTs. You know what? We should we should label those. We'll label them on the radio lines. I don't need to label any of these. I don't think. We'll draw the symbols, make them a tenth. Okay, we may have to come in here and tweak some of this. I'm not sure yet. So the prefix, I'm going to just add a colon here. Okay. All right, we want road, not railroad. This is the type of stationing I want. I don't need to worry about super elevation of any, any of this other stuff. So we've got a pretty good, pretty good um, uh, group of settings there. So I'm going to go ahead and save these uh, so that so that my folks have them. So I'm going to call this stationing label. Let's say uh, S stationing label uh, main. I'm going to call it. Okay, and I'll save that. Okay. Now it's going to ask me to pick the polyline. Okay, so I did that. And it just went in and generated the labels. Now there's a lot of them because um, I'm doing every 100 feet and this is a big uh, this is a big alignment. Okay, but you can see they're labeled here. It labeled the point of tangencies and the point of curves. I got my ticks and my marks. Now what's a little bit different from in in Carlson from Civil 3E is these are just text entities and lines. Like these aren't special, okay? And uh, this is still just, if you click on this, it's still just a polyline, okay? But it, it went ahead and, and did the label. So this, this isn't a special object now, okay? So I actually kind of like that. Now, uh, let's just say you had, um, so now we've got our stationing label, which is cool. Um, but let's just say, for example, that we had um, a line in here and we wanted to label the station offset of the endpoints of this line. Okay, so that's something else we can do here fairly easy. So right under this command we just used, station polyline, we've got label station and offset. So I can click that. Okay, and um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the polyline here for my center line. Okay, and the beginning station now, because it's Carlson, you gotta put in that beginning station again, right? Which for me was 10,000. 
Okay, and I want perpendicular labels. I don't think I need any label brackets. I'm going to just take the defaults here. I think we're going to see how this looks. Okay. Okay, I don't like these labels, these layers, so I'm going to come back here and pick my station layer again here. So we're going to put everything on that stationing layer. Okay, and we're going to just see how this works. So we're going to hit OK. And it says pick your polyline, your center line. So we're going to grab that. Okay, and then it says pick the point you want. So we're going to go there and there. And you can see it's properly labeled the uh, alignment. Okay, now, um, I'd like to tweak this a little. I'd like to put station in front and get a leader on my, an arrow on my leader, you know, so there's some things I would like to do do to that. Uh, but you guys get the basic idea. Now, I did note one thing I, I don't like here is I would like this to be uh, rotated 180 degrees. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a setting in our station labels. We should be able to get a setting that makes that readable with the screen. See if we can figure that out real quick. All right, uh, some labeling on the radio lines. Yeah, I don't see an easy way to do that, so I may have to. Um, I may have to ask the Carlson guys how to how to get that to work. They've got great tech support, so I may have to call them. But uh, here's what you could do. Um, what you could do is rotate around this midpoint 180. Okay, so click that, grab the midpoint, and rotate 180, and uh, you can flip that around. Okay, but I'm sure there's a setting that controls that. Uh, but there you go, guys. I, I, I went long. This is a this is a about double the length of my normal video, but I wanted to show uh, Elena how to do this. So just kind of to review, uh, we had our uh, ortho photography in. I turn that on. Okay, we had our ortho photography in. Uh, we went in and created our straight line segments along our, our route or our alignment. Then we went in, used the fillet command, and we just kind of uh, used trial and error to fit an appropriate radius on those. And then we took those arcs that we created with the fillet command and the straight segments, and uh, we created a 2D polyline with the PE, polyline edit command. And then uh, we went here to the center line menu and used the station polyline center line command and uh, created our stationing labels. Um, it's a thing of beauty. I like it, um, and I, I think it works well. Carlson does a good job. And uh, now you guys know how to create kind of a GIS level um, alignment on some ortho photography and label your stations. Thanks for watching. We will do some more videos on Carlson Survey for you guys.